In 2004, this man, Russell Mays, was convicted of murdering his infant son, Alex. A diagnosing doctor said the baby had been violently shaken. The father was sent to prison for life. Since then, shaken baby syndrome has come under increasing scrutiny. Attorneys at Nashville's Conviction Review Unit came across Russell's case, and after speaking to a myriad of experts in pathology, radiology, neonatology, genetics, and ophthalmology, concluded that he was innocent of killing his son. We spoke to Nashville's District Attorney's Office Conviction Review Unit Director, Sunny Eaton, about what went down. About a year and a half ago, a case came across our desk at the Conviction Review Unit about a father charged with child abuse and ultimately murder of their infant son. We spent the last year and a half investigating that case. We met with a lot of experts. We did a lot of research and ultimately our unit determined that both of these people were innocent of what they were convicted of. Um, and part of the mandate of our unit is that when we discover that we got something wrong as a DA's office and there's actual innocence, we go to court and we try to fix it. So shaken baby syndrome, um, it's a medical term that isn't really used much anymore. Now it has been broadened to be called abusive head trauma. It is the, the medical belief that it, a caregiver has shaken a child to the point of severe injury or even death. We had doctors, present day doctors, who specialize in a variety of fields, look at all of the medical records in this case. We had a medical examiner, who's a medical examiner for the state of Tennessee, look at the autopsy records, um, look at all of the labs. We had a former chief pathologist for Vanderbilt University look at the labs. They were, they were tasked with telling us the truth. That's the first thing that I wanna say is we're not defense attorneys. That's not our job. We are, we work for a prosecutor's office. Our job was to find out what happened. We were not looking for anyone to tell us these people are innocent. We wanted doctors to tell us what happened to this baby. And what these experts told us one after, one after another was that abuse was not the most likely cause for Alex's condition. They told us that we would screen for a lot more things now than we would have screened for um, 25 years ago. We now know of myriad other diseases and conditions that can mimic the what we before thought could only be shaken baby syndrome. Now we know that there is a host of other things that can come into play. Metabolic disorders, vitamin K deficiency. Um, there's a strong belief that baby Alex had one or more strokes and that that may have led to, to this condition but their testimony wasn't enough. Ultimately, the original trial judge decided to let Mays' conviction stand. He leaned heavily on the findings that were presented at Mays' original trials. Mays' case is currently before the Tennessee Court of Criminal Appeals, which has to decide whether to grant him permission to appeal the ruling. Well, because think about how challenging this process is. I mean, we were the district, we're part of the district attorney's office that convicted these people. We went back to court, our elected district attorney, Glenn Funk, went back to court, told the court, we got this wrong, these people are innocent, and yet here they are, still convicted of these crimes, one of them still in prison. That's how difficult it is to undo convictions when they happen and help innocent people who are languishing. If you want to know more about the work of the Conviction Review Unit and the case that we just worked on, Russell and Kay Mays, go to the link in the bio and read the article by Pamela Koloff.